Hello and welcome to this channel. In this video, we will talk about tuberculosis. Tuberculosis is a bacterial infection caused by Mycobacterium tuberculosis, a slow growing bacteria that can persist for years in the body. Tuberculosis is a significant public health problem, especially in developing countries, where it is responsible for high morbidity and mortality rates. According to the WHO, 10 million people get infected annually and 1.4 million people die of tuberculosis annually. Around 5% of tuberculosis cases occur in industrialized countries. Another contemporary challenge concerning tuberculosis is the development of drug-resistant TB strains. So even though most of us, including me, no tuberculosis primarily from movies and history classes, it is still a very important topic and due to traveling and immigration an important topic to know, no matter where in the world you live. How is tuberculosis transmitted? Tuberculosis is primarily spread through the air when a person with active TB in their lungs or throat coughs, sneezes, speaks or sings releasing tiny droplets containing the TB bacteria, so Mycobacterium tuberculosis, into the air. These droplets can then be inhaled by another person who may become infected. Just to recap, the bacteria have to get into a person's lungs by breathing them in with the air in order to get infected. Also to mention is that not everyone who inhales the TB bacteria becomes infected. In most cases, the body's immune system is able to fight off the bacteria and prevent infection from developing. However, if the immune system is weakened, such as in people with HIV or malnutrition, or if there is a large exposure to the bacteria, such as in crowded or poorly ventilated settings, the likelihood of infection is increased. I just want to highlight again, to make it absolutely clear, that TB is not spread through casual contact such as shaking hands, sharing food or drinks, or through contact with surfaces or objects. The bacteria have to reach another person's lung to lead to an infection. What are the different types of tuberculosis? There are two primary types of tuberculosis the latent tuberculosis infection and the active tuberculosis disease. Latent tuberculosis infection is when a person has been infected with a bacteria that cause tuberculosis but does not have any symptoms of the disease. The bacteria are dormant and not actively growing in the body. People with a latent tuberculosis infection have a positive tuberculosis skin test or blood test, but do not have any other signs of the disease. Latent tuberculosis infection can progress to active tuberculosis disease if the immune system becomes weakened. Active tuberculosis disease is when the bacteria are actively growing and causing symptoms. It can affect the lungs as well as other parts of the body. Active tuberculosis disease can be further classified into several types. The pulmonary tuberculosis is the most common type of tuberculosis and affects the lungs. Symptoms may include a persistent cough, chest pain, fever and weight loss. Extra pulmonary tuberculosis affects other parts of the body such as the kidneys, spine or brain. Symptoms depend on which part of the body is affected. Drug-resistant tuberculosis occurs when the bacteria that cause tuberculosis are resistant to one or more of the antibiotics which are used to treat the disease. Drug-resistant tuberculosis is more difficult to treat and can require longer treatment with different antibiotics. Another type is the HIV-associated tuberculosis. People with HIV are more susceptible to tuberculosis 
and a disease can progress more quickly in these individuals. HIV-associated tuberculosis can affect any part of the body and can be difficult to diagnose and treat. The last type of tuberculosis is miliary tuberculosis. This is a severe form of tuberculosis that occurs when the bacteria spread throughout the body via the bloodstream. It can affect multiple organs and can be life-threatening. The symptoms of miliary tuberculosis in the lungs are similar to those of other forms of tuberculosis, including fever, fatigue, weight loss, night sweats and cough. However, because the tubercles in miliary tuberculosis are so small and numerous, the symptoms may be more severe and rapidly progressive than those of other types of tuberculosis. Complications of miliary tuberculosis in the lungs can include respiratory failure, sepsis and death. Early detection and treatment are essential in preventing severe complications and reducing the mortality rate. So what are the symptoms of tuberculosis? The symptoms of tuberculosis can vary depending on which organ is affected. Tuberculosis of the spine can for example lead to back pain and deformity, while tuberculosis of the kidney can lead to hematuria and flank pain. Most commonly the lungs are involved and for this form the symptoms can be non-specific and vary depending on the severity of the disease. Some common symptoms include a persistent cough that lasts for over two weeks and is often bloody, shortness of breath, chest pain, particularly when breathing or coughing, fever, which is typically below 38 degrees Celsius, night sweats, weight loss and fatigue. In severe cases, the disease can cause respiratory failure, which can be life-threatening. How can we diagnose pulmonary tuberculosis? Diagnosis of lung tuberculosis requires a combination of clinical evaluation, imaging studies and laboratory tests. The most common diagnostic tool is the Mantu tuberculin skin test, which involves injecting a small amount of purified protein derivative under the skin and evaluating the response after 48 to 72 hours. Other diagnostic tests include chest X-ray, sputum culture and nucleic acid amplification tests. Chest X-ray is one of the most commonly used diagnostic tools for tuberculosis. There are several signs on an X-ray that can suggest the presence of tuberculosis. The first is abnormalities in the lung fields. The most common sign of tuberculosis on an X-ray is the presence of abnormalities in the lung fields. These abnormalities may appear as areas of opacity, which may be single or multiple, and can be found anywhere in the lung. The second abnormality is cavitation. Cavitation is the formation of cavities or holes within the lung tissue. It is a characteristic feature of advanced pulmonary tuberculosis and is typically seen in the upper lobes of the lungs. Another abnormality is fibrosis. Fibrosis refers to the formation of scar tissue in the lungs. It is a late-stage feature of tuberculosis and may be seen in areas of the lung where the disease has caused damage. Sometimes we can also see pleural effusion. Pleural effusion is the accumulation of fluid in the space between the lungs and the chest wall. It is a common complication of tuberculosis and may be seen on an X-ray as a wide area around the lungs. If you want to know more about pleural effusion, we have a separate video on that. Another abnormality we can sometimes see in an X-ray is lymphadenopathy. Lymphadenopathy refers to an enlargement of lymph nodes. In tuberculosis, lymph nodes in the chest may become enlarged and visible on an X-ray. Sometimes we can also see miliary tuberculosis in an X-ray. Miliary tuberculosis may appear as numerous small white spots throughout the entire lung fields. It is important to note 
that none of these X-ray signs are specific to tuberculosis and can be seen in other lung diseases as well. Therefore, a positive X-ray alone is not enough to diagnose tuberculosis and additional tests, such as sputum culture, may be necessary for a definitive diagnosis. Sputum culture is a laboratory test used to diagnose tuberculosis by growing and identifying the bacteria that cause tuberculosis from a sample of sputum, so mucus coughed up from the lungs. The sputum culture is one of the most sensitive and specific tests for diagnosing tuberculosis, particularly in individuals with symptoms such as cough, fever and weight loss. The test is usually done after a person has produced sputum for several days, as the bacteria may not always be present in the first sample. The procedure for sputum culture involves collecting a sample of sputum from the patient and then incubating it in a specialized culture medium that encourages the growth of the tuberculosis bacteria. The culture is monitored over several weeks, during which time the bacteria grow and can be identified using specific stains and biochemical tests. Sputum culture can help determine the presence of active tuberculosis, the severity of the infection and the drug sensitivity of the bacteria, which can guide treatment decisions. However, sputum culture may take several weeks to yield results, which can delay the diagnosis and treatment of tuberculosis. How can we diagnose extrapulmonary or latent tuberculosis? The diagnosis of extrapulmonary TB depends on the affected organ system. For example, a biopsy or aspirate may be needed to diagnose TB of the lymph nodes, bone, or joint. Vertebral TB can be diagnosed with a combination of clinical symptoms, imaging studies such as MRI, and microbiological tests such as AFB smear and the culture of biopsy specimens. Urine culture may be used to diagnose renal TB. The diagnosis of a latent tuberculosis infection is made with a tuberculin skin test or interferon gamma release assay. A tuberculin skin test involves injecting a small amount of purified protein derivative of the TB bacteria under the skin and measuring the reaction after 48 to 72 hours. Interferon gamma release assays detect the release of interferon gamma by T cells in response to specific TB antigens. A positive test result indicates exposure to TB but does not necessarily indicate active disease. In addition to these tests, a medical history, physical examination, and other laboratory tests may be used to confirm the diagnosis of TB. How can we treat tuberculosis? The treatment of tuberculosis involves a combination of antibiotics for a minimum of six months. The most commonly used antibiotics include isoniazide, rifampicin, etambutol, and pyrazinamide. The choice of antibiotics and the duration of treatment depend on the severity of the disease and the susceptibility of the bacteria to the drugs. A simplified version to remember the treatment plan for tuberculosis is 4 for 2, then 2 for 4. This means that the patient receives all of the four earlier mentioned medications for two months and after these two months, the patient receives two of the medications for another four months. Depending on the severity of the infection, this scheme can however be altered. You can find more detailed information about the treatment on the webpage of the WHO. How can we prevent tuberculosis? Prevention of tuberculosis includes vaccination with the Bacillus calmet guarin vaccine, abbreviated as BCG, which is effective in preventing severe forms of tuberculosis especially in children. Other preventive measures include early diagnosis and treatment of active tuberculosis cases, contact tracing and infection control measures in healthcare settings. In Europe the use of the BCG vaccine 
has varied over time and across countries. Some European countries, such as France and Italy, have had national BCG vaccination programs since the 1950s, while other countries have never had a national vaccination program. In some countries, such as the United Kingdom, BCG vaccination was targeted at high-risk groups such as healthcare workers and individuals from areas with a high TB incidence. In recent years, there has been a shift away from routine BCG vaccination in many European countries due to a number of factors, including low TB incidence rates, low vaccine efficacy in some populations, and concerns about the potential for false positive results on TB screening tests in vaccinated individuals. However, some countries, such as France and Spain, still recommend BCG vaccination for certain high-risk groups, such as infants born to parents with TB. It is important to note that a decision to vaccinate against TB should be made on an individual basis, taking into account the local TB epidemiology, the patient's medical history, and the potential risks and benefits of vaccination. That's it for this video. I hope it was helpful. And if you like our channel, please subscribe. Thank you very much and hopefully see you again in the next video.